Here are a few tips on things you should consider when choosing what medical school to attend. So the first thing is going to be the type of school, whether it's going to be an, a mainland MD school, a Caribbean MD school, a DO school, or an international medical program. I'd recommend if you do have the option to try to do a mainland MD school, this gives you the most options with specialties later on. Next would be a DO school. The bias between an MD and, and DO school has is going down a lot, but unfortunately there still are some programs that are very heavily in favor of MDs. And I have seen DOs who are in competitive specialties in various institutions. However, there are some still some programs that have more of an MD favor. So if you do have the option to go the MD route, then I think it's beneficial for you to do so. Also, there's other things like having to do extra classes for um, the DO route, such as uh, OMM classes, but uh, that's another video. So if you don't get into any mainland MD schools and you don't get into any DO schools, I recommend you uh, then go to Caribbean MD schools. These have a high attrition rate. And I noticed most of the graduates from these programs tend to go into more like internal medicine or uh, primary care. So maybe a little bit less competitive specialties and there is a possibility that you can get into more competitive specialties but it seems a little bit harder if you go the Caribbean route. If you don't get into any of these, an international medical program is still an option. I know people that who went to like India or Poland or other places and often they have like a six-year program right out of high school so you can save time that way. However, it's often harder to come back to the US and practice so if you're trying to practice overseas then that's fine. If you're trying to save some time and you want to do like primary care, then it may be an option that works out for you. However, if you're trying to do something more competitive, and even if you're trying to do primary care, it is a little bit harder for in international medical graduates to come back to the US and practice and uh, get a residency spot. So often, it's only like the brightest of the international medical graduates that end up coming to the US and matching to a residency here. So mainland MD, then DO, then Caribbean MD, and then international medical school. The next big consideration that a lot of people often overlook is cost. So medical school costs are going to be very expensive regardless of where you go. However, some schools will charge like 30000 per year just for tuition and then other schools will charge like 60000 a year. That may just seem like large numbers regardless. However, that amount adds up, especially if you're taking loans as most students do. So you need to factor in the basic tuition amount, which is going to be like thirty or 60000 or whatever it is. And then you also have to factor in the cost of living. So different areas, let's say San Francisco or New York, urban areas that are popular are going to be a lot more expensive to live in than like some rural uh, Midwestern area for example so factor that into your overall decision since all those costs are going to add up and especially if you're taking student loans as most students do it's going to end up leading to a large amount over the long term and a significant difference from if you go to a an area with a high cost of living and high tuition as opposed to an area with low cost of living and low tuition so I'd really recommend you choose a school that has a uh, lower overall cost to attend. Another thing you need to think about is financing options. So some schools will have private loans or federal loans. Some schools will have different programs like a primary care program that may let you take off some of your tuition or all of your tuition if you work in an underserved area for a while. Some schools will, will have connections to different programs um, outside of the school that lets you do things like that. So uh, look at all your financing options, see what kind of situation is best for you and uh, again, factor this into your overall cost of living and tuition and figure out what's the most affordable option for you to uh, do medical school since regardless of where you go, a lot of medical school is just what you make of it. And if you can save a big chunk of money by going to a school with a lower tuition, and lower cost of living, better financing options, then you'll definitely come out ahead in the long term. Next is going to be location, and location is important for things like family and friends. If you have like family that you're taking care of, if you have friends that you want to stay close to, or a significant other that's stuck in an area for work or other reasons like school, you may want to stay in a certain area and geography is going to play a part in that. Location is also important for things like activities that you like to do. If you like to do skiing and that's one of your big hobbies, then you're not going to want to go to like like central Texas or something. If you don't like seasons and you don't like the rain, you may not want to go to a northeast medical school. So factor all these into your overall quality of life considerations in choosing a medical school. So next you want to look into things like proximity of the medical school to rotation sites in your third and fourth year. Some schools will make you drive for like an hour, hour and a half to uh, some rural locations or somewhat far away locations. And other schools will have like a teaching hospital like right nearby. So it's a lot more convenient to have a hospital or different uh, affiliated centers right near the school that you don't have to commute to as much since uh, rotations are going to be long and uh, tough and it's very convenient to have a location nearby that you can easily go to for those 
clerkships. Also, if you have an idea of where you want to live in the future and uh, maybe what kind of residency you want and where you want to have the residency and where you want to have your long-term career, it's beneficial to find a school and attend a school in that area since you're becoming a part of the community and you're networking and things like that and it'll help you in the long run to get back to that community after you finish residency. The next big thing to think about is school culture slash competitiveness. So different schools are more or less competitive. Unfortunately, often the more prestigious universities tend to be more competitive. However, some schools, like I think Yale have systems where they aren't as competitive even if they are more prestigious. So look into how competitive students are, talk to a few students and see what kind of culture they have and see if you'd see yourself fitting in with that culture since you're gonna be with those individuals for four years and you're also going to have those individuals who are in your class as uh, friends and colleagues in the future for the rest of your career. So it's definitely important to have a good class with a good school culture. So obviously different schools are going to be more competitive, however some schools are more collaborative and in general and some schools are a little bit more competitive and this plays into the next consideration as well. So the next big consideration is going to be the academic slash program structures. So this is going to be like how they set up their four years of medical school. Do they do a combined didactic first and second year into one year and then have like an extra research year like, like some universities? Do they start clerkships or seeing patients even in your first and second years? Or do they do like a traditional two and two of didactics and clerkships? Do they have pass or no pass, which makes things a lot less stressful? Do they have mandatory classes, which is somewhat inefficient in my opinion. So all these different considerations with like the class structure, clerkship structures, what kind of programs the school tends to focus on, like if the school is more primary care focused and you're trying to do surgery, it may not be the best fit for you, although you can still do surgery in a primary care focused uh, medical school. You just won't be as aligned with your goals. You want to also make sure that the program has a lot of opportunities to shadow and experience the uh, particular field that you want to. So if a specific medical school has a lot of opportunities in like pediatric ophthalmology in clerkship years and they have a lot of staff who are pediatric ophthalmologists, then you may want to uh, go to that school if that's in line with your goals. So make sure whatever program you want to get into, that school that you're trying to get into or you're considering has a lot of options for that in clerkship years as well as faculty and uh, affiliated doctors who are in that similar field. Similarly, if you really want to do research, make sure your school has opportunities for research. Some schools even have like extra allotted periods for research time and some schools have mandatory research requirements so if you don't like research then maybe don't go to those schools and if you do like research and you want to publish a lot then maybe go to the schools that emphasize research a little bit more that have more resources for research and uh, more support for research. Another thing with classes is to check if classes have like NBME exams which most schools do nowadays or they also have like teacher generated exams. I find that teacher generated exams are usually not as relevant to step one. So like my school unfortunately did like all NBME exams and this is more relevant to step one. So that kind of helped have more high yield information as opposed to more of nice information to know that wasn't as pertinent to the step one board exam as some professors or teachers might focus on. You also want to see if the school has things like problem-based learning or team-based learning sessions, how much they emphasize those versus like standard uh, lecture type format. Since different styles may work better or worse for you or require more or less of your time. Also some schools have specific programs that are like specialized for certain things like some schools have like a primary care track or a uh, public health track or things like that like a business track. So if different schools offer things that again are aligned with kind of what your overall goals of being a doctor and your overall career ambitions then definitely try to choose schools that have those options for you. So next look at overall program efficacy. So this would be measures that show how effective the school is at training their students. So things like step one scores, match rates, attrition graduation rates, if the school is accredited or not, which most are nowadays, the student support services slash mentoring opportunities, uh, mental health services and things like that, which definitely play into the overall quality of student life. And make sure that the school is sending a lot of its students into the specialty that you want to get into. And also try to see if the school is getting students into the universities that you want to attend as well. So a lot of students often look for prestige as like their first option and a lot of people in society I guess generally value prestige a lot. However, prestige doesn't really mean a lot in the long term. What matters is the quality of education you get and 
how aligned that school and the program is with your overall goals and your overall well-being. Prestige it does matter to some extent if you're trying to get into a competitive specialty or you're trying to maybe network a lot in medical school and often in prestigious universities you have a lot of those high achievers in your class. However, I do think other aspects of a medical school and choosing a medical school are way more important for your overall development as a physician and your overall happiness and effectiveness as a doctor. So do consider prestige, especially if you're trying to do something competitive, but uh, remember that the other considerations do have a huge impact on your overall uh, experience as a medical student. Another thing to consider is prestigious schools often cost more, so again, at the end of the day, if you're going to spend a lot more money to go to prestigious university and you could have a comparable education at another university with maybe less of a prestigious name, but you're getting a similar education, then it's going to be a lot more effective for you in the long run to go to a more affordable school that's less prestigious and you come out with less debt and you're able to pay off whatever loans that you have and you're able to start making a net positive income a lot sooner than if you had gone to prestigious university and spent a lot more money on uh, tuition and cost of living. So the type of school, the cost, the location, the academic structure, the school culture, the prestige, and the program structure are all important considerations when you're trying to decide on what medical school to get into. Make sure to consider all these factors, especially cost in my opinion, when making the decision instead of just prestige as most people do, and you should be good. Also remember if you ever have any questions, always try to ask the administration and also ask students so you can get a sense of what the administration has in mind and also what the students think from a first person account. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, leave it down below in the comment section. Make sure you give this video a like, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. I haven't done a vlog in forever. Can you guys see that? I don't even know what I'm talking about. Hopefully this turned out okay because I'm not wearing contacts and I can barely even see the camera. <laughs>